win of 265. Western Australia have got away to a good start. Geoffrey Marsh is the opening batsman there. Now on strike, Tom Moody, his partner, having scored the first run. So we'll go now to the main commentary position where we have Simon O'Donnell and Bill Laurie. Thank you, Greg Chappell. Yes, 265, the target. That's 5.28 runs per over. Wayne Holsworth and Randwick End, right arm fast bowler. Jeff Marsh, a very experienced campaigner, has made a lot of hundreds at the international level. He needs a big one here today. That's the equation for Western Australia, but he's a very good batting strip. The outfield has quickened up as the day's gone on, a strong breeze across the ground. So, Simon, it should be a, a good chase here by Western Australia. Nothing to lose, the Western Australians. They've got to give it their all. This gentleman will be making sure he gives his all. Wayne Holdsworth came back from the Tour of England. Hasn't had the success he would have liked. Today's a chance to catapult himself up there again. His leg stump marsh very strong. Just picks him off nicely for two. It's a very good batting lineup for Western Australia with Justin Langer, Damian Martin, Mike Bolletta, Young Hogg. Batting at six, Julian, Zura, Atkinson, Angel and Stewart. So they've got the batsmen capable of scoring big hundreds with particularly in the top six. And this should be a good chase here by Western Australia who have won eight out of 14 finals they've played in. Henry with two slips and a go in on the offside. And the gully, that's Neil Maxwell, who's a brilliant fieldsman, quite square. Maxwell there is brilliant in the gully, or any position, in fact, and there's a man at point. And a whitish mid-off, almost going around to a cover position. This man here leaving the gap here for the drive. And at a whitish mid-off, and a cover point, and a third man on the offside. On the onside, a mid-on, backward square leg, and a deep fine leg. Oldsworth and all the New South Wales bowls will just try and bowl straight at the stumps and, and hope that the Western Australians in their haste of scoring five runs per over will make a mistake or two. But you couldn't get a better pitch. Peter Leroy's done the job here today. Certainly has. New South Wales went into their innings. They like scoring somewhere near four, four and a half in the first 15 overs. I think we're going to get a fair idea of what's going to happen in this match in the first 15 overs of this WA innings. They're nowhere near that 60 plus. I don't think they can win it. Three runs off the first over from Holsworth. It's none for three. Neil Maxwell takes up the attack from the members. And Maxwell, a hustler, really. It's all energy and enthusiasm. While quite sharpish, It'll be a fraction short or full. He's, he's a, likes to bowl the odd York or the odd uh, short pitch delivery. He's bowling to just the one slip and a gully. And a man in at uh, short cover for the lofted off drive. He's been pushed back a metre or two now. And the gully coming in a fraction closer and squarer. So just the two catches, the slip, the gully, the ring of three on the offside, trying to save the single and the third man. And the big job here for Tom Moody. He dropped a catch. He didn't bowl well today, but he's a very experienced campaigner. One of the best hitters in the world at uh, the one-day level. And he really has to do the job of Richard Cheekley here to take the attack up to the bowlers, hit hard and often, and maybe go over the infield in the first 15 overs. And he gets that nicely away, just a little push down to mid on. Marsh very slow out of the box because he was going back to his, his crease, just a single. There's Moody's statistics this summer. 69, 109 balls, his best. By his standards, not a great year. Certainly not. We saw a couple of weeks ago where Darren Lehman really put Neil Maxwell off his game initially by being very aggressive towards him. That's the role Tom Moody has to play today to try and put Maxwell off his game. He's a very important cog in this New South Wales wheel. He's quite sharp now, Maxwell. He's a really handy cricketer. There's the base four results, Victorian dividends, $3.90 and $1.60 for the winner. Uh, number six paid seven dollars for place. No, Bill, no need looking at me. I wasn't smart enough to be on any of them. Great day in Melbourne for racing fans at Flemington. 
well bowled. It's uh, not giving Marsh any width at all to play his favourite cut shot or square drive. Jeff Marsh with years of experience. It really is a run machine in the one-day games, Jeff Marsh. Probably passed his best. I don't think that's an unfair comment, but still a very handy cricketer. Chasing big totals. He's opened the batting for Australia a lot. So his input's going to be very important. That's a good delivery straight through him. It's not easy to do that to Marsh, who's been around a long time. There's what Bill was talking about before. He has been around a while. 35 years of age, Jeff Marsh. A lot of international cricket and domestic one-day cricket. 110 versus South Australia at the Wacker in 90... 91. If he can reenact that, he'll be very happy. And the other thing, he'll give his side a chance. It's a good tidy over for Maxwell. There's no wicket for four. That's a situation after two overs. Western Australia... No wickets for four. Moody and Marsh, two apiece. They need 265 for victory in the Mitchell Mitchell Cup final. Wayne Holsworth flat out from the Randwick end. And Moody uh, with all his experience. Uh, I think he's got into the mould of a professional here, Tom Moody. I liked him when he was smacking the ball down the ground and hitting over cover, as he did for Australia once at the Gabba when he made a magnificent 89. I think that's Tom's best method. And this wicket will give him a chance to do that. There's not a lot of bounce there, but if you're strong straight, you get an opportunity of keeping that strike rate of 72.1 up. 102 is his top score. Tom's got to be pretty aggressive out there today. Play to his strength, and that's strong and straight. And if, uh, if you're just coming in from the garden or shopping, there was a big hit by Trevor Bales today. The Mercantile Mutual sign is worth $170,000, and he hit Damien Martin straight down the ground in the final overs. It was a good, clean hit, and it's going and it's going, and it misses by about a metre and a half, I guess, as it strikes the side screen just to the right of the Mercantile Mutual sign. So Trevor Bayless probably dreaming of the 170000 by about a metre and a half. Great sponsorship, the Mercantile Mutual Company, supporting cricket as Moody hits that well back with a point. And some good uh, value for the players if they're lucky enough or good enough to hit one of those signs. We've had a couple of close calls in the last few weeks. Mike Valletta last week, Darren Lehman the week before. Trevor Bayless today. And some players there and thereabouts. That prize money is just fantastic for a good hit and take that sign. You did it on the full, you're a rich man. Holsworth charging in. And for our viewers at home through Wide World of Sports, I'll get on the phone now. There's only one side that can win it this summer, and that's Western Australia now. So get on to 00556022528. No player hits the sign today. One person from each state will win a Mercantile Mutual Cup cap and player shirt of their state team. But if it is struck by a Western Australian batsman, you could win $17,000 here later on this afternoon. The Mercantile Mutual Cup hit the sign home viewer competition. It's a ripper. Holsworth on target, a little bit of outswing. It's a pause from the slips cordon there. Wayne Holsworth, one of the promising young lines with the ball, probably has fallen back a bit after the Tour of England, but that happens sometimes. Didn't quite make the test side become a tourist and you just lose your confidence but certainly has tremendous potential it does it's two major attributes bowls quick and bowl a bit of outswing and there it was one very wide but when he gets it right and bowl a very quick outswing this is quite handy just one run off the over it's a good one for new south wales there's no wicket for five final and neil maxwell looks in good rhythm and on a very good line. Got to remember the effort of New South Wales here. They're going to host the Shield final in a couple of weeks. They're in the final of the Mercantile Mutual Cup. And they've got a number of senior players overseas touring with Australia. It's an absolutely fantastic effort, five players in fact, to get this far with such an inexperienced side. 
That's a fair comment, Simon, because I felt that Western Australia would have started favourites today because they haven't lost a player to the Tour of South Africa. They've got Langer and Damien Martin and Tom Moody and Jeff Marsh, and Brendan Julian, who toured England, and Tim Zura, who toured England as well. So they're at full strength. So if they go down today, it's full credit to the New South Wales second string or their depth is so evident in both competitions. No ball called. Maxwell quite lively here. West Australia need a big opening stand and then about four runs per over, give them a launching pad. See the way Neil Maxwell's bowling. He knows Tom Moody is stronger on the front foot than the back. It's not a big puller of the ball and he's really angling that ball into middle and leg stump around hip height. And that's uh, knocked down, but a single's taken. It's big Phil Alley that dives across from mid -iron. and he, I think he's looking for the Yorker there, Simon. I think he got one or two in short. He's looking for the forward delivery. Oh, I'm about to give it up, Bill, I think. I've just said he's going sort of in at the hips and middle and leg stump. It was it middle and leg stump? It was about four yards further up than I said he was going to do. But so he's got to mix it up at some time. But that's where you've got to bowl to Tom Moody, not to bowl to his strength. Just nice, short of a length, angled in at him. If Marsh. He'll be just saying, uh, concentrate, find the gaps, keep the score ticking over in the early overs. West Australia have won eight. Never told mutual cup type finals. It's a great record of after 14 appearances. This is their 15th in the final series. So they've got the experience. New South Wales going for their third on the trot. My word, under Phil Emery, they've done very well at Sheffield Shield and Mercantile Mutual Cup level. He's a cool-headed customer, Phil Emery. He's plenty of experience there now. Leads his side very well. Never panics. Gets on with the job. Calm, relaxed, and that's exactly what you want from your captain. One happy gentleman next to him there too, Richard Cheekwee. Very good over. It's none for seven. They started needing 5.28 runs per over. And that's the first sign of aggression for Moody. He finds a gap at the cover. The ball's run down. They pick up just two runs. Must be Tom Moody's role. Must make sure he pays some aggressive shots. No need to be stupid. Try and play ones that aren't on, but that's on. It's wide of the off stump. He's tall, he's strong. All the fieldsmen are up within the circle. He's got to pound it through there a few times. Bring up some boundaries, some threes. Get the momentum going Western Australia's way. They must have it going their way. They're chasing 265. Long way to go. That's a beautiful shot. Misfielded as well, so they pick up the extra run. Moody, certainly a tremendous time of the ball. One of the tallest batsmen at international level, Tom Moody. When he's on fire, he's uh, very hot, and he's needed today. He's appreciating Wayne Holdsworth being a bit of a skidder as well. And stand up tall and punch him back down the ground, even though he's well short of a length. And skid even more now, because there's quite a heavy shower coming over the SCG. That will help Western Australia's cause if they can get a shower or two here. Not too heavy. Make the outfield greasy, the ball hard to control and maybe encourage the ball to come onto the bat as well. Normally in the second innings, the wicket does die a fraction here, but it's getting quite heavy now. But I'm sure the Western Australians in particular will try and stay out as long as they possibly can. Yeah, it's only a shower. Stay out there, get the ball wet, make it uncomfortable for the New South Welshman. If nothing else, make them get a cold. If you don't win it, there's got to be some other way of getting there, and you can annoy them enough by making them get a bit of a chill. I'm Moody there trying to drive on the up. It's just a passing shower. It's very cold. Players wearing their sweaters. Tom Moody knows what he has to do. He's had years of experience for Worcester in the county championship in England for Western Australia and Australia. So Mars and Moody don't lack experience. That's important under pressure. Very important. And that man will know all about it. Pressure, 
importance of being able to handle it at this level. It's well ball by Holsworth, not drawing, dropping it too short. He's got one of those strong actions. He's a bit of a swinger, but uh, really a nice athlete. Runs uh, strongly into the wicket. Does not enormously high. So this is a real skidder, and that ball skidded, and you can see Tom Moody misjudged it. Thought it may bounce a little more than it did. That's what Wayne Holdsworth can do, really get them to shoot off the wicket, not really come up at you in any shape or form. That's the over bold. That's number 11. We're now across to Kenny Callender at Flemington. What's race five at Flemington today? It's nicely played by Jeff Marsh, but just a single. The other important thing that shower has done to the SCG, moisten the outfield, the ball will soften up more, especially at this early stage. Not many overs bowled. Five point six for the run rate required. That ball will soften up a lot. That'll help the WA batsman. Moody plays a superb back cut. That's four. Beautifully played off the back foot. Early into position, found the gap, and it raced away across the wet outfield for four. It's exactly what he's capable of. Anything wider that off stump, he can punish. He's used to doing it in Perth. Only the bounce over there a little more even than here. That one sat up and said, hit me, and he did. Punish Neil Maxwell being short and wide. Can't afford to do that in one day cricket. Also, just as important, the batsman, when he does get a delivery that's not up to shape, he's got to make sure he takes full toll of it. So he drives to short cover, which is cheek either slips out now, so. Phil Emery not giving them too much uh, room to manoeuvre. The two catching men now is the man at gully and the man at short cover. So I'd say the man at short cover is just close enough. The umpires have to be very careful to watch the distance there from the batsman to the short cover position. It has to be a catching position. It's chipped away and out. Has he got it? Phil Alley, the big man. Six foot ten, takes the catch. That's the end of Moody. He's out for 12. And it's one for 16. How do you stop a rampaging blue? I don't know if you can. Not in 93, 94. Anyway, that's a fantastic catch from Phil Alley. See the big man move like this. He's pumped up and ready to go. Diving forward. That isn't easy. Keeping the clutch on the ball as his arms cannon into the ground. Great effort. Why wouldn't the New South Welshman be happy? They've got rid of the prime move for Western Australia, Tom Moody. He's gone for 12 from 19. Western Australia, one for 16 in the fifth. One time Daryl here at the members' end. Wicket to Neil Maxwell, the wicket of Tom Moody. Langer immediately off the mark, quickly down to final leg, just the single holes worth the fieldsman. But that was a very good effort by Phil Alley, the big man at mid-on. He really moved well to take that catch. Tell you what, he's a big fella. 200 centimetres tall, if not more. Looting go forward there, lunges forward. It's a big grasp on it with his two big mitts. Won't let go as he hit the ground either, and that's what can happen sometimes. He cannons into the ground there with the forearms. It never looked like coming loose. Well done. Another one that's in the air, fall safely. A good over from Maxwell. It's all happening here, it's one for 17. New South Wales were one for 13. And they scored 264 after 50. Just a manual one, Jeff Marsh three on 17, he'll need to move it along. It's Wayne Holsworth and Randwick weekend. Well, Phil Alley, yeah, you've got to give him full points, the big lad at uh, mid-on taking that catch. You're, you're walking in with the bowler. Moody chips it away and he moved very well. He was off the meat of the bat, he was maybe just playing in front of himself a bit. He was going to ground, that's a, that's a fine catch. Very good work from the big fella. They're all happy. I know the prime move is gone. Gives them even a better opportunity of winning this match. It's always going to be a tough task for Western Australia. Tom Movie out of the road early. Makes the task a little easier. 
Justin Langer have, having a great season with the bat, batting at number three, and he'll punch the ball. He's a very good player, Justin Langer, made over a thousand first class runs. He's an average in the 40s in the one day games. And he's going to keep knocking on the selection door for higher honours. He's uh, got a lot of courage. He showed that against the West Indies in Adelaide. Fine 50 in the test match. Missed the tour of England. But has had a good year, hasn't dropped back at all. Played it's into the gap at square leg. Here comes Big Phil only again. They're through for two. Oh, oops, <laughs> he did well there. It was a good return in the end. How much confidence can you have? He's foxing now for a run out. He's taking a classic catch now. He wants to fox and try and get the run out. Just slips this one out of the palm there. Just a little bit greasy ball. Whoops, got away, but got it back at first snatch. Very handy fast with down bowl as well for Lally. That height, it's plenty of bounce. Justin Langer, very correct batsman and attacking player, has a very good record. Only a young man, 23 years of age, this is his 12th match. Hasn't scored 100, 350 is the highest score, 87, but a very good average and a pretty fair strike rate of 65.2. Certainly is. Last week in South Australia, he came out, moved his feet a lot, was very positive from the start. He has to do the same thing today. He'll be looking to get away with it a little better today. He's capable of making a big score. Well, bold, yes, he says no, says the captain, rightly so. Would have been curtains. McNamara was in quickly from cover. Mass saying, hang on there, son. The old boy at one end saying, look, youngster, any danger of slowing up a little bit? The legs don't go like they used to. I don't reckon he would have even got halfway in that situation. Just a keen to get things going. Quite a good series. Looking for a big score, a couple of 30s and 40s. To increase on that today. Over from Holsworth, keeping it nice and straight. It's one for 19. Daniel Maxwell charging in from the members' end to Jeff Marsh. Good fielding by Bevan and Squillig. A pretty good crowd in, considering the game is televised live in Sydney today. They give good value for the money, New South Wales, whether it be four days or one day games, are always attacking. That's their method, and it's a very successful one has been in both forms of the game, the four-day game and the one-day game. Great to watch. Wait for the call there from off our head. Did he get some bat on that? A leg by. As they see some great cricket over the year, the supporters of the New South Wales cricket team, the War Brothers, Mark Taylor, Michael Bevan, Fantastic spin bowling from Matthews over the years. Michael Slater more recently, an opening batsman. And they're freezing too, it's a cool afternoon. Oh, what's he tried to do there? Justin Langer tried to hoik him over mid-wicket and got through him, lucky not to get an edge. There's a blow fly going across the front of him. And he tried to swat it away. Why he was trying to do that is beyond me. It's the only reason I can think of. He's a mile away from it. Misses it by a yard. It didn't miss the stumps by a yard. And everyone was in a bit of shock that he played a shot like that so early. I don't think it bounced. I think it was an off break, slow delivery. It's well bowled by Maxwell, mixing them up a bit. Throws the ball to mid on for a bit of a polish there. Neil Maxwell, all energy. He's a very quiet man off the field, but very fiery once he goes across the white line, Neil Maxwell. Suffers from white line fever, but he's infectious. His enthusiasm is infectious. And it really gets everyone else going. No matter what situation the game is at, Neil Max will be giving you 200%. No ball. Oh, 
Not a swing of the ball, but uh, just relies on that quick arm action to get it to bounce a bit. He, he likes to bowl plenty of bounces in the first class matches. Here he must keep the ball up a bit further. Gavin Robertson, the off spinner, doing some signing on the fence. It's a nice shot, but straight to mid off, no run. Tough day, Phil Alley. Off a great catch, that one skinny across the outfield and done a finger. You would hope that's not his seeming finger either. Last thing you want that is bruised and swollen before you start your spell. You'll come through it all right. Good tidy over from Max Ward's one for 21. 21 as Kerry O'Keefe and Bruce Yardley take up the commentary. Thank you, Bill. Run chase on here by Western Australia. And they just can't afford to uh, to get too far behind. Started off chasing around about five and over. It's now 5.83. Current run rate of 2.57. Nine wickets in hand. A vital blow for New South Wales. The dismissal of Tom Moody. He's the guy who could have stepped things up a bit. A brilliant catch from Phil Alley. Who not only is a very, very good fast bowler, but uh, agile, a great athlete. Oh, that's a good shot. Pace taken off it by the short cover there. One of the catches. Welcome to you, Kerry O'Keefe. So when uh, New South Wales drew up a game plan last night, the men with uh, the most runs in recent years at the SCG have been Tom Moody and Mike Valletta. And Tom Moody already back in the pavilion. Jeff Marsh and Justin Langer with a lot to do now. Langer, who's changed his uh, style a great deal, averaging uh, with a, a strike rate now of around 100. Um, was around 60 last year. And really a much more positive batsman during this summer has over a thousand shield runs very focused and at number three for wa with a lot of responsibility that today now that moody is back in the pavilion yes it, he knows that he's got to be very special to get back into the west to the australian team decided to loosen up his wrists a bit and get after the bowling he scored a thousand runs in shield cricket this summer there's his career stats, 12 matches only in the domestic competition. Well, Holdsworth thought he had a wicket then. But he's not out. Let's go to Flemington now for race five, the first leg of the double, the second leg of the treble. Good handicap. It's one for 24, Moody the first man to go. 12 from 19 deliveries. Marsh is on six from only, from 24 deliveries, laying a three from 16. Just uh, his timing just a little astray here, Swampy Marsh. Likes the ball coming onto him. And Neil Maxwell slanting in all the time. Denying Marsh the full length he wants and inducing the inside edge. Been a fine spell of length bowling from Maxwell. He got Moody when Moody didn't move his feet forward, chipped to mid on, and he's contained. Yes, he's got a very high arm action and a fast arm action. Likes to get up nice and high and hit the pitch hard, which means that he's hurrying onto the bat, but on this normal pitches uh, if he had a green top he'd be a fair seam of the ball i'd say there's not much grass on this pitch very good batting pitch so extra special bowling here from maxwell and uh, he's created he's forced langer into the slog which was a shocker unusual for him it's one for 25. for 31 they had new south wales after 10 overs west australia one for 25. They're looking at that equation, it's not too bad. He 
New South Wales hit the, the accelerator button around about the 11th over. WA still need 240 from 39.5 overs. It's a run rate of 6.02. Current run rate is only 2.45. Nine wickets in hand. Very important. New South Wales had nine wickets in hand with 10 overs to go. <laughs> And the important thing about getting runs in Sydney is sometimes you've got to hit the ball on the up. There's not a lot of pace in this pitch, uh, traditionally, and people like Chiqui and Bevan are prepared to take it off the stumps, square the wicket, and go uh, on the up with their driving. Jeff Marsh isn't that sort of player. Langer has become that sort of player. Martin prefers pace. Valletta has runs here. They're not hopeless, but somebody has to get a very quick hundred. A bit of a way movement from Holsworth. Started wide and kept going. Was he a bit lucky to get away with that? I think so, but Marsh is going to have to play a foreign game. Um, he's normally been the rock. All his one-day international credentials have been built around um, staying there and, th and turning over the strike to quicker batsmen. Today, he really has to take the helm, and he's got to hit the fours. He's a senior player. You win these games with your experienced players. Well, Holsworth, uh, we feel like his luck's uh, run out here a bit. A couple of close LBWs and a, an inside edge. Down to fine league for a couple. Marsh trying to go through the offside. He likes to go square. Angel and Atkinson bowled the perfect length when New South Wales batted early. So Maxwell and Holsworth have bowled that particular length. Race five, Flemington Mukta's played 37.70. Uh, Gatana and let him ride the place getters. That'll be a nice trifecta. Oh, brilliantly fielded. Maxwell in the gully. He's hot. New South Wales have fielded superbly throughout this competition. Neil Maxwell's work square of the wicket. Jaunty Rhodes like, and look at this high left corner. Mark Bosnich. They got him covered there, Swampy Marsh. They got the man at the gully. They got a man backward of point. A short cover, and they've also got a man at cover point. They know he likes to go square of the wicket. Just like that. It's a good shot. Just the one down to Phil Alley. It's the over. It's one for 28. Two good south of the ground. Over the top of the scoreboard is looking a bit, bit bleak. Bit of inside edge, maybe. Maxwell didn't think so. But Darrell Hare did, because he's signalling runs off the bat. Um, no leg buys. He must have squeezed this. But that's a very good shout coming in from outside off stump, if he didn't. New South Wales didn't believe he got an edge to it, but the man that counted did. Umpire Darrell Hare. Well, bowled again, Maxwell. He won't give him any room. Justin Langer. He looks uh, looks to be looking for the pull shot. He knows that he's not going to get any half volleys from Neil Maxwell. Bowling the the perfect length. 236 required. A run rate of 6.1. It's not impossible, but the outfield is a bit slow. Bowled. You'll have to be quick, Jeffrey Marsh. Just the one overthrow down to... <laughs> Man, he's nearly out there. How close was that? Like he went to sleep, Swabby Marsh coming back for the second. Shane Lee can throw a cricket ball 
over 100 meters. He's the man, after they go for this quick single, the throw from Hayward, the overthrow, but it's Shane Lee lurking down on the boundary. He saw Marsh laboring, and he's rifled one, and only just in. Now that is a good hit. Down to long on. That's a good shot from Justin Langer. He's hit through the line of the ball. He's hit straight. Western Australia to win this. That's the sort of stroke they're going to do it with. You've got to take length bowling over the top, especially in the first 15. Langer was hell-bent on pulling early. Now he realises if he hits through the line, he can get under the ball, and that was the result. The bowl strokes are going to get the Western Australians home. It's being over number 12. It means that only two men are allowed outside the circle. It's gone through mid-wicket this time. A little chip shot. Trevor Bayliss, the man there in chase, I think. They picked up three. So a good over for WA. They need just that a uh, bit more than six and over. Seven runs off the last two deliveries. Langer must also look to open the face to go through the offside. Looking to close the face and club through the leg. You've got to play both sides of the wicket in Sydney if you're going to go against the clock, as the Western Australians have to. But it's this man with all the responsibility, Jeff Marsh. He can't adopt a minor role. Yes, the timing's not quite there for Swampy today. And just see it out. Just have Justin Langer going at the other end. Good players. The timing comes. Quite often you'll see a guy who's uh, labouring in the first 10 or 12 overs. All of a sudden starts to get some rhythm for his batting. It's a great over for WA. 10 from that. It's 1 for 38. The eight New South Wales were 1 for 50. Langer's on 12, Marsh is on 11. And that doesn't look good over the back there. That's to the south of the ground. But we've seen worse than that today. It's been sweeping around. There's been sweeping showers. And nothing so far to uh, force the players from the field. That looks a bit dark. And Holdsworth just taking a little time here, adjusting his boot before this over. Commences. No slip for Holdsworth. And Western Australia, their, ba their record batting second this summer in domestic one days hasn't been good. Um, as you can see by the graph there, that New South Wales got that brilliant stand between Bevan and Cheek where he got them over 240. And the early wicket has put Western Australia behind the eight ball. Long time between drinks there for WA. Yes, but um, they batted first on four occasions and won three of those matches, the Western Australians. The times they chased, uh, they squeaked home against Tasmania in round two in Perth by two wickets and lost against Queensland at the Gabba. They, you would think they're more comfortable batting first. Here they are, batting second with a poor record, chasing 264. Odds very much with the home team. Gee, they bowl well to Jeff Marsh. They know, they know how to dry him up. He loves the cover drive. He loves the square drive off the front foot. And he likes to cut. So they've uh, got the four fielders there to cover all of those shots. And Holdsworth has bowled beautifully to his field. He's uh, nothing too short, nothing over pitched.
fair uh, example that of uh, lack of timing from Swampy Marsh shaking his head there in the background and when am I going to get one in the middle? Bill Alley stretching he or Shane Lee will be used next and six foot ten is going to come at these two bowling the same sort of length Another big shout, shout from Holdsworth. He's entitled to have a shout because he doesn't bounce a lot. He skids on to the bat. Another good off cutter. Marsh wants the ball leaving him, so as Bruce say, says he can go through the offside with his signature strokes. And Holdsworth keeps jagging back at him from a good length outside the off stump. Well thought out, this game plan of New South Wales, and it's working. It's got to be close. That is out. He's given him out LBW. He played across the line with full pitch delivery. That's a telling blow for New South Wales. They wanted the captain. They've denied him runs. They dried him up. And then he's produced a quick Yorker. The front foot going nowhere. Struck on the big toe in front of middle. Steve Randall knew it was out. Holsworth's elated. And the Western Australian captain departs. LBW to Wayne Holdsworth. Western Australia, two for 39. Age 22, he's played 16 matches, a career average of 44. He's come to the crease, and it's raining. Probably pitching outside leg, maybe a little high. The players, I think, will have to leave the field for the first time today. That's pretty heavy rain. Umpire Darrell Hare, Steve Randell. They've got to check out this, the conditions, see where it's coming from the rain, whether they think it's going to pass over or not. staff coming on to get the covers on as quickly as they can I don't think it's going to be a heck of a lot of rain it's sort of wispy floating rain so the West Australians will be a little disappointed I guess the fact that they can't keep New South Wales out there for a little longer get the ball a bit wet the pitch just a little bit greasy the ball slips on makes it a bit easier for batting It's just about stopped already. Phil Emery is saying, come on, I'm going to get these blokes out. He's quite happy to stay. Ground staff uh, got to get the Hessian down first to soak up any moisture that's there. We'll take a break and we'll be back with Greg Chappell in just a moment. So we're just having a slight break from the cricket. New South Wales batting first, 264 from their uh, 50 overs. Western Australia at the moment uh, have lost uh, two wickets in reply. They're uh, two for 39 from 13.1 overs. So we'll take the opportunity of going down to Melbourne at this stage for uh, totes on race six with Kenny Callender a break at the moment because of a few showers coming across the ground but this morning Phil Emery won the toss and elected to bat first and that is the New South Wales batting card Richard Chiqui a magnificent 131 being the highlight of that innings he was well supported by Michael Bevan his 77 they were the mainstays of the four for 264 total West Australian bowlers struggled Joe Angel was the best of them even he a little bit of a toweling towards the end one for 40 from his 10 overs mark atkinson bowled a little bit better than that uh, julian struggled early but fought back well moody copped a bit of uh, caning from chi Kui. jamie stewart was a bit unlucky damien martin slipped in for the figures there at the end uh, two for 31. we go now to the uh, the wickets that fell and the first one of course was martin hayward 
A bit of fielding, and that's out. That's run out, backing up. Very unfortunate way to get out in any form of cricket, but in limited over matches, you're tending to back up because the pressure is on. Mark Atkinson in his follow-through has put the hand down, got a flick on it, and into the stumps. Well, you could say this is brilliantly fielded, really, because uh, he's tried to stop the ball to save four because it was going down the ground. And uh, what a terrible way to get out. Supposed to be cricket being played. We have a little break here at the Sydney Cricket Ground, as you can see, looking down to the south there. A few heavy clouds about. We can only hope that they're going to be clearing up shortly. Uh, the Western Australian side won't be all that pleased about being in the dressing room because the longer they stay in there, from 25 minutes past three, Eastern Standard Time, they start to lose overs. And with the format as it is these days, um, if they lose, say, two overs, their target is adjusted accordingly. Uh, but then becomes the best 48 overs of the New South Wales innings. So their task will only get harder the longer they stay off the ground. There's a little bit of light rain falling, but you can also see there's a bit of sun shining here at the moment. We can only hope that uh, the sun is in the ascendancy for the, the greater part of the day. So people taking a little bit of cover. The uh, wicket taking a little bit of cover as well. Peter Leroy and his ground staff have that covered. The big blue plastic cover there. The sky looks quite dark in the, in the south where the weather is coming from. But what we've seen for most of the day is for that to come and go. And fortunately, the uh, dark clouds haven't been around for too long. We can only hope that uh, we get a few more bright spots. One of the bright spots of the day's play, though, was the New South Wales innings four for 264, the highlight of which was the innings of 131 by Richard Chi Kui. Just sit back and relax now for a few minutes and just enjoy with us some of the highlights of that innings. This time the gap's been found. That's a magnificent cover drive. Oh, that's beautifully phrased. A fraction short at the outfield sway. This one may go. Rolling down the hill. That's the first boundary of the morning. Over cover goes Richard Tweakley. A fine shot. Whack. That's a magnificent strike off the back foot. Stand and deliver. And it's well saved. They're three for three. Bevan coming back for the fourth. Chiqui slow out the box. Safely home. 12 runs off the over. Sensational over for New South Wales. Oh, that's nicely driven. This time it's through the onside. The outfield slow. He's on fire. Richard Chiqui running down towards the members. Desperation by Stewart. Into the gutter it goes. Four more. He goes again over mid-off this time. He's really thrown the gauntlet down to West Australia. Just the single. Oh, welcome to the crease, Mr. Moody. That's going all the way. Dropped by the cameraman there. Bit, bit, bit there dives to the right. But what a beautiful blow from Richard Tweakwee. Welcome to the final, Tom Moody. Pick up two here. Damien Martin's got the ball. This is going to be close. It's a good throw. The throw was good, but not quite good enough. That's his 50. That's down the ground straight. It could go for four. Magnificently placed for four. Chiqui goes in the air again. That might be once too often. Or has he picked the gap again? He's been dropped. This time he goes a bit flatter and a bit wider. You don't worry about the fieldsman out there. One bounce, four. This is his fourth half century. Six runs short of his first hundred. That could go for four. There's man inside the circle with fine legs, so he moves to 98. The perfect leg glance. Just helped it on its way. Moody straying onto the leg stump. This time he should get it. It's into the gap. If he runs hard, it'll bring up the hundred for Richard Tweakley. That's a tremendous knock. He punches the air and rightly so. Richard Chiqui getting a magnificent ovation. It's down there. Thanks a lot, Greg. Shining. And the showers have left the Sydney cricket ground. One ball has been bowled. Brad McNamara is the bowler. We have a revised target for Western Australia. One over has been lost in that time delay. So they now have 49 overs to face and a target to win of 262. Justin Langer is the left-hander. 
a bit adventurous in the short time that he's been out there. He's been joined by Damien Martin, two of the bright young batting prospects for Australian cricket. So if Western Australia can pull this game off, these two will have to do most of the work. In the commentary position now, we have Bruce Yardley and with him, Bill Laurie. Thank you, Greg Chappell. Yes, young Damien Martin on screen and Justin Langer, the two young Lions of the Western Australian batting lineup, will need to score at 6.28 runs per over from here on in. Just need to bat sensibly and put that on ball. McNamara medium pace. Probably one of the best one-day bowlers in the Mercantile Mitchell Cup is Brad McNamara. He can swing the ball into the right-hander or away. He's got good variation and he bowls straight. And Bruce Yardley, the Western Australians will need to score almost off every ball. Yes, and I think they'll need to get onto the front foot and play from there. Justin Langer has, uh, has been keen to try and play the pull shot, but the ball's not bouncing enough for him. So I think they've got to get on the front foot. Richard uh, Chiqui was sensational. So was Michael Bevan. He's getting on the front foot, hitting through the line of the ball. And, uh, and just working it by closing or opening the face of the bat. And when they wanted to hit hard, they just hit straight down the ground. It was wonderful stuff. Well, Damien Martin certainly has the flair to do that. He's taking guard now from umpire. Daryl Hare. It's a testing uh, situation with this young man. He's played for Australia. He's toured England. He's missed the boat to South Africa. So he, like Langer, needs to score well in this final. It's very important for them. That's the over bold from McNamara. It's two for 40. Australia 2 for 40 after 14 as big Phil Alley takes up the tack from the Randwick end. Pretty good spell from Holsworth. He was quite lively. Seven overs, one for 15. Maxwell, six overs, one for 21. A good variety in New South Wales. The left arm fast bowler coming in now. And they have Robertson to bowl off spin. Bayless can bowl off spin. Well balanced side. And despite the loss of five internationals, New South Wales very competitive. And this guy I've always rated him very highly. I saw him take six for in Perth uh, a couple of summers ago and bowled absolutely magnificently. He's had a few uh, injury problems. But he comes down from, uh, well, he's 208 centimetres tall for a start. Let's make the definite point. But it might be what these guys need. A little bit more bounce than they've been getting. West Australians used to the ball bouncing. You're saying they can't play away from Perth, Bruce, or...? No, I'm not saying they can't play away from Perth, but they struggle a bit away from Perth. Race six, number nine, strike high, paid $11.60 and $3.30. Some good price winners at Flemington today, race six. Got that one away, but down to fine leg. It's going very quickly across the ground, that's well fielded. Exciting player, Justin Langer, as is Damien Martin. The applause there for the man at uh, Fine Leg. Holsworth, who did well. The sun breaking through, and this is a vital partnership one feels for Western Australia. Getting back to whether these West Australians can play away from home or not, I would say that if you can't make runs on this pitch, you really can't make them anywhere. It's not bad to bat on the looks of things. Oh, well, he's a very handy bowler, Alex, that bounce. Oops, this will be dicey now. They get safely through. Confusion there, the ball hitting the stumps. That was good running in the end, but it would have been a tragedy if one was run out. Yeah, so I think that Langer figured that he was new, he was right after the stumps had been broken. He was going to the other end. You can see them hit here. The ball ricochets. Justin calls. He knows that he's right up that end. And uh, the ball's got to be thrown back to this end, taken, and then the stump lifted out of the ground after the, uh, the stumps have been broken. So not a lot of risk, it was well run. Just the gully in for Damien Martin in the catching position, quite deep, the square so he does cut in the air. And the man at points, right on point. Oh. Damien Martin, one of the most exciting players because he's unorthodox. He would over cover with the open face, hit the ball for six over cover. An excellent strike rate of 80, good average of 44. It's only his 16th Mercantile Mutual Cup match, so he's in the early stages of his career at this level, it has got something special. 
Yeah, he's only 22 years of age and uh, he's done pretty well already for a young bloke. Played a couple of test matches. That's what he'll do. He's caught Maxwell. No, it was McNamara. He paid for that. He dropped in short and he went for it. And what a catch. Brad McNamara at point taking it. A superb catch. That was well played. He was there for the catch and he took it. Yeah, I was going to say, that's what he's capable of. I thought it was a magnificent shot, but what a catch. A sensation catch. Gave himself a little bit of room. A bit of extra bounce there. And what a catch. That's one of the best catches you'll ever see. Probably the best I've seen this summer. They're renowned for their brilliant feeling, New South Wales. And that catch could win them this match. Damien Martin's out. For a duck. Disappointing uh, blow there for him. He gave himself some room. He paid the penalty at three for 43. Margaret Gully is on fire. He's taken a magnificent catch to dismiss Damien Martin. Damien Martin hit it well enough. And McNamara went quickly to his right. And Phil Alley strikes in his first over. It's all happening for New South Wales in this final. Just have a look at this for a catch. He's given himself a bit of room. Unusual to play a shot like that, I guess, uh, when he was on naught. But that's, uh, you'd have to think he was a bit unlucky, I guess. A sensational catch. And that was going. He probably thought it was four all the way when he hit that. He's come down the track, given himself room, and he hadn't scored any runs. And maybe he will rue that decision. I'm not sure why you charge uh, Phil Allen. He's always going to drop in a fraction short. Cramped him up a bit and rather than swashing it away, he hit it away hard enough. It was a gem of a catch by the man on screen, Brad McNamara, a very handy cricketer. Martin's out for duck. Three for 43, and the pressure mounting with each delivery for Weta and Langer now. They bat down, though. It was Australia. Azura is very handy. As Brad McNamara takes up the attack from the members in. 15 overs bowled, 3 for 43. Langer. He looked for two here. He finds a gap there at uh, backward square leg. And uh, Phil Emery not taking any chances at all here, Bruce. He's got the four men inside the circle and five back already after the 15 over, so they're going to find boundaries very hard to come by. Yeah, the outfield's pretty good uh, in close, but as you get uh, a bit deeper, it's quite lush and the ball hasn't travelled to the fence a lot today. Swing onto leg stump. They look for a leg buys. The three for one. Back it's off the bat. Single to Langer. Surely for the new batsman, they'll have a slip in. Try and bowl him out. That's Mike Poletta. Michael Poletta, really one of the veterans of the West Australian team. 36 of these domestic one day matches. Career average of 37.96, a strike rate of 63.4. Highest score of 105. Good, the Western Australian need a big one from him today. It's a good strike rate and a very good average, Mike Folletta. Gully comes in, he's beaten outside the off stump, a bit of bounce there for McNamara. Mike Folletta's only 30, he's been around a long time. Two at England who played a vital part in the World Cup win in 85, batting in the middle order. Was beaten by the maybe a move, moving away there. Run rate required now is 6.44 runs per over. Just the single. Due to the rain, there's been a reduction of one over. 49 overs to be bowled to West Australia. The target now 262. Been a fair uh, performance from New South Wales so far. Look at the run rate now required by WA is up to 6.45. Current run rate of three. West Australians have struggled. They've given them nothing to hit down the ground, have they? Just short of a length and uh, making them go square. 
West Australia struggled from the first ball this morning when Ben and Julian misfielded, really. Had a bit of a whack with a run out. And Haywood was backing up too far. He was out for four, but otherwise they've been behind the eight ball all day. Maxwell fires, misses, not by much. That's the over bowled. It's three for 48. Three for 48 after 16. West Australia struggling against New South Wales in the Mercantile Mitchell Cup final. Manga 21, letter 1. Phil Valley to continue. 1 over, 143. The man at the gully, no run. Oh, I'm very impressed with Ali. I think he's. Uh, type of bowl Australia needs he's got that bit of devil he's got six foot ten in old terms and I think once he gets a permanent position in the New South Wales side he'll be a force to be reckoned with yes I like the way he gets in so close to the stumps bowling stump to stump and then he's got the uh, the ability to move the ball either way Terry Alden was a great bowler for Western Australia and Australia he used to get in really close to the stumps Well, he um, won't swing the ball too much here today. It's a pretty good career so far. He's um, in and out of the New South Wales side when the War Brothers come back. And young Glenn McGrath as well. Well bowled, not too much width there, and McNamara in from uh, Gully to cut off any single there. Very professional performance by New South Wales, and Western Australia will have to do something special here. These two have the ability to, to be quite special at times. They've got to get some runs, get them on the board, but they can't afford to lose another wicket. a magnificent catch to dismiss Tom Moody so he's full of confidence he's got an early wicket Damien Martin so he's doing his part for New South Wales spent a year at the Academy in Adelaide Phil Alley in and out of the New South Wales side they're so strong you have to perform all, virtually all the time to maintain a place Good shot. Beautifully played. Maxwell giving chase. He's gaining on it. Slides and kicks it into the gutter. Superb stroke. That's a beautiful back cut from Justin Langer. They've got him set up for the uh, the hook shot. Two men in the deep down at fine leg. It's time now to cross to Rose Hill for race six. Your caller is Johnny Tapp. To Rose Hill, weather has improved considerably. Sun shining now after a pretty murky old morning. And this is the Ranvet Stakes coming up. Now, the little horse you can see walking into line is a New Zealander called Seascay. And Sydney Cricket Ground, another wicket has fallen, that of Mike Bolletta. New batsman to the crease is Young Hogg. He's yet to face a ball. He's facing McNamara. Bradley Hogg on strike. And he's at the crease because Brad McNamara with a change of pace. But Mike Bolletta, plumb in front. Yes, he's tried to pull it over square leg. Gosh, that is out. That's middle stump, about two-thirds of the way up. Just did him with a change of pace, a little bit of off-cut. Magnificent bowling. Bolletta, LBW to McNamara for one. McNamara always a competitor in this level. He's off the mark, Hogg, with a single. The pressure mounting with each delivery for Western Australia. And Bradley Hogg's a very good player, but he's going to earn his stripes here today. He joins Justin Langer, who's on 25. He hasn't had many hits <laughs> at top level. But a couple of good 40s in shield cricket. He's only played three of these matches, averaging seven. A high score of 12. Oh, 
running up. He's played well enough. And chasing 262 for victory, Western Australia. They've lost four early wickets and they need seven, 6.7 runs per over. So that's a big ask now. I need to play very well indeed. Well, I think with the outfield the way it is too, that uh, you could take that up to about 7.5. That's the over bowl. That's 4 for 54 now. Go to Melbourne with Ken Callender for totes on race seven. Yes, thanks very much, Bill. And this is the Australian Cup where we see the up and coming champion, Mahogany. And I think uh, West Australia need a few champs there at the crib. Race seven. That'll be a beauty in 15 minutes time on Wild World of Sports. But here at the Sydney Cricket Ground, it's all New South Wales. They are really tightening the screws on Western Australia in this final. They batted well. They're bowling well. They're fielding well. And Western Australia filling the pinch at this stage. The United over stage, they're four for 54. That's a no ball, called by umpire here, quite rightly a square leg. It's plenty of sport on Wide World of Sports. Races in Rose Hill and Melbourne. And race six in Sydney, that's the dividends. 15.50 for win and 4.20 for a place. 230 and 180. The long shots getting up at the races at Rose Hill and Melbourne so far. WA long shots here at the moment. Interesting bouncer, wasn't it? Two deliveries ago. You know, when you've got the opposition four for 55, chasing 260 odd. Just a bit of a surprise. I've been thinking of getting onto the front foot a little bit, Justin Langer. I've got two men set in the deep behind square for the uh, the skyed hook shot, just to keep Langer on his toes, just to keep him guessing. He was prepared to give away a run for a no ball. What he's probably trying to do is get the one about waist high. He rips it away. He's been tended to try to pull the ball today, Justin Langer. So they have two men out. They're quite deep as well. When we look at them. One in front of the members. It's just in from the fence at a uh, oh, squarish fine leg and a man of faction square at uh, square leg. So they've got two out for the, there he is there for the pull or hook shot. And we'll be aware of that. Oh. It might be just a four. Sometimes they drop two out and involve full. It's a part of the game to try and work out the opposition batsman, and the batsman has to be aware of what's going on. And the problem is for Western Australia that they know this is a target, 262. And they've already lost four wickets, 20 over stage, so they're struggling. Magnificent effort, 199 run partnership between Bevan and Chiqui set the score up for 264 after 50 overs. It's been reduced to 262 because of rain. That's a good shot. That's a brilliant shot. Going down the hill towards the scoreboard. The outfield is slow. They should run for. Good dive down there. They're three for three. It's danger. This is dangerous. He's... Oh, it's all, it's all happening. And safely in the end. You can see that happening. And off goes the bales as well. Emery at the last minute whipping him off for Hog. Oh, the heart was in... <laughs> jumped into the throat then. Is Justin Langer. Magnificent cover drive. But I think young Hoggy thought that there was four all the time and he didn't have a look to go back for the fourth. And all of a sudden, Cordy got himself into a bit of strife here. A throw there, that's the wrong end. And then just started to amble and then all of a sudden got a shock again. Got his bat down in time. If Phil had it, Ali had caught that return, he would have been run out. Ali dropped it. The ball was in. That was a problem. The throw was a good relay throw. Well bowled, half a shout, bat and pad together. It's four for 58. Four for 58. McNamara continues from the members' end. Bradley Hogg. In fact, it's Justin Langer. Two left-handers at the crease now. Langer's moved to 30.
Yeah, I like the way New South Wales play cricket these days. It's uh, it's all go, isn't it? Emery's taken over as captain. Jeff Lawson, I felt, really got them going when he took over as captain. And uh, every match was played to win. We see a bit of defensive play in cricket these days, but these blokes, magnificent unit. It's good running. Excellent running by Ranger. Ranger was always going to make it. And all of these positive uh, thoughts flow through. And you see a young bloke like uh, Richard Chiqui just tear the attack apart today. Just saw the first few overs off. Brendan Julian came in to bowl and he attacked him, took 11 off his first over. Tom Moody came on and he whacked him back over his head for six. When you've got players in that frame of mind, you're going to be a good, uh, a good team, a good attacking team. You've got a chance of beating anybody. 6.8 required. That's not impossible on the Sydney cricket ground, but the problem is they've lost four wickets. Mr. Wang is having a great year with the bat, batting at number three. 202 runs required. Well bowled. He really does bowl good line, McNamara. He's at you all the time. Won't get too much swing here today because of the moisture that's around. But he's quicker than what he looks to when he lets one go. It's quite sharp. That's why he's so handy in these one-day matches. Batsmen are never sure of the pace of the ball. It's just been mixed up all the time. Probably having played a bit with Steve War, he's learned to uh, vary his pace a bit. Keep the batsman guessing. Change in the field. This is all attack now. Good pressure on the young bloke. Plus to York Hogg. He plays it pretty well. I've been impressed with Bradley Hogg. I think he's a good fieldsman. Hasn't had many opportunities with the bat, but he's a likely type. And this is a good learning experience for him to come into a final under pressure. A big score here, he'll get a big tick for the future for Western Australia. South Wales have also uh, shown over the last few years they've become a magnificent fielding side, creating many runouts. But the runouts also come from the pressure applied by the bowlers. That's when get a bit tied up and then crack. It's four for 61. Australia. Gorelli, left arm over the wicket. That's a good shot. And sweeping this will be close for the go for two. It's Maxwell. He's got a good arm, good athlete. That's what we're just talking about. It's applying pressure and being able to hold that pressure. Look at that for a bit of feeling. He was uh, had a magnificent save, made a magnificent save in the gully, opened the bowling, bowled really well. Really competitive attitude. glance that beats a wicket Emery that could go all the way now finally go around quickly this is gonna be a chance as well close safely home two leg buys he figured he had two uh, easy here this is how good they are this New South Wales team pressure all the way they pick up the ball quickly and get rid of it quickly that's the secret getting it back to the keeper he struggled too, Radley Hogg, because he didn't turn very well at the other end. He was a bit blind. Beautifully bowled. Nice full length, good angle. Left arm over the wicket. Maybe to swing it back, maybe from leg to off and get an LBW. He's very close to the umpire there. This one actually holds this line and missing leg stump but nice length 
he's got a good chance of getting an LBW if he can uh, get online because he's bowling stump to stump. There's not too many angles involved. British crowd in. Conditions uh, still overcast. The sun breaking through occasionally. They deserve the support New South Wales are on top of the Sheffield Shield table, top of the Mercantile Mutual Cup table when the final started. It's some good days, uh, family days here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Some top haircuts as well. talking about uh, club cricket and boys and girls uh, the ACB just a reminder to all club secretaries strength in numbers please send a reply to reply plate number 169 that's to all club secretaries survey of all cricket clubs in Australia just a reminder to secretaries right around Australia to get their replies in okay it's time for race seven at Flemington the Australian Cup in calendar with the odds. Yeah, th three. Bradley Hodges on two. And it's big left hander Phil Alley operating from the Randwick end. Following a very good line length. And his sixth over has one for 14. That's what's happened. Uh well, we've been away at the races. It's now four for 67, Western Australia. And uh, I can't really see them getting up from here, but you never know. Brendan Julian to come. Tim Zura, good strikers of the ball. But uh, lost too many wickets. Langer's on 33 and Hogg's on two. And uh, the New South Wales bowling to their plan. Bowling straight at the batsman, not too short. Making the batsman hit across the line. Mike Valletta paid the penalty, trying to hook it over square leg. 195 runs required at 7.45. If they win from here, they'll be 100 to 1, Western Australia. I guess this man on screen is the key, Justin Langer. It's the over bowled, it's 4 for 67. And Simon O'Donnell. Thanks, Bill. Pitcher tells the story. Western Australia, 4 for 67. All behind New South Wales, same time. One for 100 with the Blues. Doing it very well. Matt McNamara will continue. Bradley Hogg, a big ask. Time out in the middle of doing the world of good if you can stay there. So I really think only mathematical from now on in. I can't see Western Australia getting anywhere near. New South Wales total. They've outplayed them in every facet of the game thus far. Michael Bevan, a fantastic 77. An enormous support to Richard Chiqui in his first maiden century in one day domestic cricket here in Australia. Western Australians still having a go, plugging away at it, running well between the wickets. And to get his view on proceedings and how he thinks this game will finish. Kerry O'Keefe. Well, you have to fancy New South Wales at this stage, uh, Simon. Particularly when you look at um, the batting to come, a lot of the all-rounders, but uh, really one of the specialist batsmen had to be there and get a big hundred. Langham may still do that, but the, the sloggers are going to come in and score at around seven and a half and over. New South Wales hold pretty tough during these situations. And you would think that uh, they've got such a firm grip, it's going to take a lot for them to, for it to loosen. I can't see it loosening. A few people will loosen up after that victory in Melbourne. Durbridge, 470 and dollar seventy. Station hand, a lovely run. Coming through the field with Mick Dipman on board along the rails. 240, Mahogany's run third. The favourite, even money favourite, Mahogany, $1.20. It's a great win in the Australia Cup for Durbridge. In fine form at the moment, and so is the New South Wales cricket team. Taken all before them, they've got five players touring South Africa at the moment. 
They're supposedly weakened. They're all senior players, obviously, representing their country. If they've taken every state apart in some shape or form, Phil Emery's led them well. So great support from his young players. And it's an exceptional effort from New South Wales to be so competitive while all those players are away. Some aggression there from Bradley Hogg. But Kerry, that stuns a lot of cricket followers, I think, that even when their senior players are away, the New South Wales team is still probably the best combination in the country. Well, basically, it's because the New South Wales selectors encourage positive cricketers. Um, Michael Bevan, uh, Cheekwee, of course. Um, Martin Haywood gets on with it. And they promote them. Look for two here, Brad Hogg. Back he comes. And he'll make it well. Well judged from the young man. It's so important now that players with the extended competition in domestic cricket with the Mercantile Mutual Cup, each state playing the other at least once, qualifying final in the final, and Shield cricket, its structure that players do play positively. Shield games over four days, you must get results. And New South Wales are very adept at being able to do that. Both codes. Exceptional effort. It's the end of the Brad McNamara over. Western Australia 4 for 73. The evolution of the Saab 900 continues. 36 from 61. Hogg 5 from 22. They'll have to be a lot quicker than that to get anywhere near the New South Wales total. They're well in command at the moment. Gavin Robinson is going to be brought into the attack. He bowling from the Randrick end. That shower would have now dried, dried up in the outfield. Be able to get a bit of purchase on the ball for his off spinners. And that is a good bowling lineup that has performed admirably today. Holdsworth one for 15, Maxwell one for 23, McNamara one for 16, Ali one for 14. And now Gavin Robinson will throw his hat into the ring. Come round the wicket. Bowling to Justin Langer. Just getting that field right. The moves. Man at backward point. Short third man, a short fine leg. Mid wicket, Neil Maxwell. Plenty of energy there, and Trevor Bayliss in the covers. They're good. Kevin Robinson's had a super season. He, he the, was the fulcrum for three outright victories by New South Wales in the Sheffield Shield. He sustained himself through some modest form by his one-day performances. And in the scheme of things, he normally bowls 10 overs uh, in the uh, Mercantile Mutual Cup games. Both he and McMurray normally get through a full complement of overs. So it's up to Langer and Co to take toll of him. Neil Maxwell, he's quick, is going to be on here, and he's gone. It's all over. Said he had energy at mid-wicket where he was. He's shown plenty of it. It's a crucial run out for Western Australia. We'll see Justin Langer hitting this ball just to Neil Maxwell's left. He moved in like a hare. Got it to Phil Emery. Off go the bales. Darrell Hare was in no doubt that that was out. Brad Hogg departs, Western Australia are gone. Pizza Haven deliver real value with their 1692 large pizzas for the one low price. Or for 12.90, any two regular pizzas for the one low price. And for a feast, any two family pizzas for only 23.90. And there's more. You can now choose from three delicious sauces. Traditional tomato, tangy barbecue, or hot and spicy. Pizza Haven's two pizzas for the one low price specials. Dial 131 241 now for delivery or pickup. At Grip Garages, we've got big ones, little ones, long ones and short ones. There's brick ones, hardy plank and colour bond too. We build Australia's largest range of garages. There's small carports, big carports, single doors and double doors. 
from kit garages to architect design. You get it all right here, where we do everything for you. Ring Group Garages on 634 1355. Brendan Julian's the new man at the crease. Brought back very well with the ball this morning. 11 off his first over this morning. Brought back well for just into the 40s. two from his ten overs and this is why he's there in sharp contrast to the Western Australians and New South Welshmen have fielded brilliantly and there Maxwell the quick tick up and throw very much a dead heat umpire hair going with the fielding team don't do it again fellas this is a great decision here from Dale Hare it all happens so quick We'll watch Phil Emery take them off. Brad Hogg's bat coming out. A magnificent decision, only centimetres in it. You've got to be a comp confident umpire to give that. He did, and he gave it in the right direction. Great decision. Justin Langer called for it. He committed young Hogg. He awaited the decision. He knows it's his fault. He asked the young man to come. He hit it just to Maxwell's left. He's very quick sideways, Neil Maxwell. And Hogg went. Western Australia, 5 for 74. Another important wicket falling for Western Australia, 5 for 74. New South Wales, the equivalent time, 1 for 107. The difference there, I can't see the Western Australians making up. I do hope they try to do it, give themselves some opportunity of getting there got 10 wickets to lose really got to go down fighting too good and phil alley's angle across julian a factor here very straight hitter brendan julian when when he's uh going but he may find it difficult to hit through the line of alley who's leaving him all the time. Action replay. Swing a little late. You can see Brendan Julian there indicating the ball's gone across him late. That's what Phil Alley tends to do. He's going to have to come to grips with that pretty quickly. He's going to end up with a little nick to Phil Emery behind. Bowls the same stuff himself, so he's well acquainted with what Ali's trying to do. It's better getting his foot pitch of the ball, getting it across, getting his momentum going over there, keeping his head over it. Way to quell any late swing. Very impressive Phil Emery, the way he's captaining the side at the moment. With WA on the ropes, he's still keeping them out of the match as if he's using the tactic and the thought that they're still in it. He's setting the right fields for the situation they are still keeping with the run rate. He's keeping them out of the match as much as he can. He's not crowding the inner circle with five and six fieldsmen. He's got his usual four. Making sure that he limits the boundaries for the Western Australians and doesn't open the door in any shape or form to let them back in the match. The legacy of Jeff Lawson, Michael Whitney and Greg Matthews is very much in evidence through Ali and people like that. Um, when you get a big total in Sydney, the young New South Welshmen know gen generally how to defend it. Ali's showing it, McNamara showed it, Maxwell, the whole lot. Shot. Salina finding hard to get boundaries. He's got his timing right. He's hitting the ball well. Just struggling a little with the placement. The only way the Western Australians can come up near that 8.02 required at this stage is by boundaries. Singles aren't enough. They've got to be scoring at least a boundary and over. And at the moment, they're finding that very difficult. Oh. 
come to grips a game with the one that moved away late. It's in Australia 5 for 77. And then Julian to take up strike. He's three from six. Played and missed it a couple of deliveries already from Phil Alley. He'll be hoping for a little more success. It's the off spinner Gavin Robinson. Weather's cleared up here at the SCG. We're over the limit of 25 overs each side. It's definitely a match. There's going to be a result one way or the other. Constitute a match each side had to bat for at least 25 overs. That's been achieved. There's no hiding now for the Western Australians. For a fresh start tomorrow, it's either now or never. Problem down behind the side screen here at the members end. He's struggling to see exactly what it is. Daryl Hare is showing some concern. He's coming back now. I don't think the side screen will be an issue. It's not in the vision of Brendan Julian at the moment. He'll be facing the other way, hopefully, to Gavin Robertson. If he's not, he's in a fair bit of trouble. side screen to move at the ramp again behind Gavard Robertson and there we go got a bit of movement Daryl Harper's waved the wizard wand and off it goes coming over the wicket he was coming round the wicket to the left hander previously and there was our problem all's in readiness now Brendan Julian isn't going to muck around out there. A couple of shots he's played already in his four runs to date have been aggressive ones. So he's not going to lay down and die, Kerry. No. Against that, of course, Robertson's not going to give him any leverage. He's going to spear the ball very full at the base of his stumps and not and disallow him from getting up and under the ball. So this would be uh, this could be a captivating contest. Um, Robertson against. Brendan Julian. The moment he's against Langer. Not out. We're going to go out to Rose Hill for the Winfield Classic over 1500 metres. You call us Johnny Tap. So they're all set. Start the village. They're coming from everywhere. Well, at the moment, New South Wales is coming from everywhere. They're well on top of Western Australia. Justin Langer getting hold of that one or not? White getting hold of it, tried to club it down the ground. Wayne Holdsworth will come across and do the fielding. Plenty to be scored. Well over an eight and over required by Western Australia to win this match. Justin Langer, the last recognised batsman out there. He's been given support by Brendan Julian, who's not going to muck about. He's made his intentions quite clear. Western Australia need boundaries now, and both Robertson and Alley are disallowing the Western Australians the, the width or the length to work with. Langer has been confined to hitting the ball square of the wicket and behind the wicket, and even Julian can't, can't find the width he wants. Bang, got it through. An easy two. Richard Chiqui doing the fielding. He'll be a bit stiff out in the outfield, Richard Chiqui. His maiden century in domestic one-day cricket today was one remember a long, for a long, long time. Cleaning up after a swift cover drive there from Brendan Julian. Missed it by a long way. Five from that over, five for 86. Drinks break here at the SCG. We'll go down and see what's happening at Fleming Flemington, an early tote call. It's the man that follows my 
tips very closely. Kenny Callender. Close down there at Flemington. Drinks break has just finished here at the SCG. And there's our dividends from the last race. A great call there from Johnny Tapp. Picked them across the line. Cap chat. $12.90 and $4.10. Mahanui last $7.30 and Flitter $2.70. Well, proceedings here at the SCG. New South Wales look like going on their merry way to the Mercantile Mutual Cup trophy. Justin Langer, 41, is holding up the boat at the moment. Brendan Julian's on eight. But Western Australia, well out of it at this stage, five for 86. from Justin Langer. Not costly this time. Langer feeding the strike to Julian. That's all right when you need four to five and over. When it's up towards 8.4, then you've got to do a bit of the heavy work yourself. Julian moving the feet around in the crease before the bowl of bowls home safely. Tactic of trying to make Gavin Robinson worry about where he's going to be after he delivers the ball. He moved around the crease a lot on that occasion. He's very positive about getting the two. Wants to get back up there and give himself and the side their best chance. Well home. What an improved cricketer Grevin Robertson is this year. He's uh, affected three outright victories. And he's dropped a catch. <laughs> that was a hard one. He's got fingertips to it. But Julian got a good piece of that. But th burst through his fingers. Doesn't it always happen? Just give a bloke a rap and... He throws it back at you. Brought and bowled opportunity, missed. Beautifully bowled and beautifully kept. It could have been worse. I could have been wrapping his catching. But he really has developed this year, Gavin Robertson. Able to spin it a long way on the last day, especially in Sydney. Changes his method for the one day as bowls it as straight as he can and a yard quicker. different in his one day cricket and that's a good move doesn't give the batsman as much opportunity to come down the wicket and hit him and dictate his line and length a little more with a bit more pace easy, easy. it's five from that over five for nine whilst the comparative stage one for 127 well in control Justin Langer 43 Brendan Julian 11 and they be the saviors for Western Australia Kerry, you've talked about improvement from a number of the New South Wales players. A trip to Tasmania seems to have done Gavin Robinson the world of good. Also, Phil Alley's really filled in a hole since Jeff Lawson has gone. Yes, well, the selectors have, have earmarked those two players for some time. It's taken um, a couple of years for Gavin Robinson to mature as a cricketer. Phil Alley likewise, but finally the fruits are there this summer. But that is the essence of New South Wales selection committees. Uh, they do bear with their men. And once again, New South Wales have had a good summer because of it. There's the graph showing the Western Australians just completely off the bit now. Five out and a long way off the run rate.
Justin Langer throwing caution to the wind. He has to in this situation. They don't want to just persist out there, Western Australia, and go through the overs. There's 21 over, 21 overs left. New South Wales at this stage, 4.37 they were going at. Western Australia, 3.11. Doesn't look a great deal of difference. Over a matter of 20 overs or so. It's an enormous difference. Some problems with Bill Alley, Brendan Julian. They continue. Well, you get the comparisons there. As you can see, it was a constant rhythm by the New South Welshman, slow early, but once they got into rhythm, it was pretty constant. And unfortunately, it is overall constant for Western Australia, but unfortunately, not as many, Simon. Very small buildings, the top top lot. That is high. It's going to be a tough one to catch. Bayless is there. He's all over the place. Never looked like it. He was getting a fair bit of support from Wayne Holdsworth in close. He never looked comfortable under that ball. I think Wayne Holdsworth may not have been so He might have been just calling yours because, in effect, really, it was Wayne Holdsworth. Bayless having to go back. Holsworth coming into the ball. So really, I think Cracker was yelling out yours. He didn't want it. In the end, just got a couple of fingers to it. And he's gone the same again. This one along the ground. I'll get an easy two. Eventful over there from Phil Alley. Western Australia, five for 96. Yeah. All behind the required run rate. Langer 44, Julian 15. Gavin Robinson will continue. Can you continue in the commentary box? Bruce Yartley and Greg Chappell. Thank you, Simon. Yes, Western Australia well and truly behind in the comparison. Gavin Robertson, the right arm off spinner, bowling around the wicket to the left hander. There's the sweep. There's a loud appeal, but not much interest shown there by Steve Randall. It was a fairly quick delivery from around the wicket. Maybe going down leg side. Let's see where it pitches. There's a chance it was going to miss. Pretty hard to give that one out. Goes again. This time it's in the air, but well clear of the field. Well clear of the ground, in fact. About 10 rows back in the member stand. Almost seemed like a top edge. That's Justin Langer's 50. West Australian 100. He might have said that's what I tried to do the ball before. Got under it. And it's gone for six. And don't Western Australia need a few more of those? About 20 more of them would be handy, Bruce. We'll now go down to Melbourne for race number eight at Flem Flemington, the Murray Cox handicap, the second leg of the extra double with Ken Callender. Thanks, Freeman. SCG, Brendan Julian was out caught on the boundary by Shane Lee from the bowling of Robertson for 19 from 20 balls. He was out trying to push the run rate up. He tried to hit uh, Gavin Robertson down the ground after it got a little bit too much elevation he could have gotten half the elevation the rest of it in length it may have gone over the boundary but shane lee comfortably taking the catch in front of his face and that's the end of brendan julian for today and west australia's hope sinking even further as the new south wales side continue away justin langer gets very good contact there straight down the ground good piece of feeling it really has been a very impressive performance here by new south wales today they went out this morning with great commitment with the bat they've shown equal commitment with the ball and in the field now we saw justin lang get hold of that he just stood his ground and went through the line of the ball i feel that the west australian batsmen today when they've tried to hit the ball hard 
have given themselves too much room. Brendan Julian didn't quite get hold of his because he went away from the line of the ball and then had to reach for it. Justin Langer again going down the ground. It's almost desperation stages here for West Australia now. They've been played into a hole. I don't think they can really blame anyone but New South Wales here. It's been a good performance by the New South Welshman. Getting a score of 264 was also always going to make it a, a stiff task. And then they've backed it up with some good bowling and some good fielding. And has made it very hard for West Australia. They've just never got off the ground with the bat. We have dividends from race eight in Melbourne. Sports Beat was the winner of the Murray Cox handicap. Second leg of the extra double. The Yorker. No more runs able to be scored from that over. Three coming, six for 112. After 32 overs, West Australia struggling. I think you could quite fairly say six for 112 in comparison with the one for 146. Zora recently arrived at the crease there with Justin Langer, 55 from 88 balls. It's been a pretty good innings from him. He has found it difficult at times, as Bruce Yardley said, perhaps trying to hit too much towards the leg side instead of going down the ground. Gavin Robertson, the recent wicket taker. He's continuing from the Randwick end. Tim Zora, very experienced player. Takes the single. Not too many worries for New South Wales if they take singles all the time. They need a lot more heavy scoring overs if they're going to give themselves any chance at all. I think even the Western Australian side would admit at this stage that the chances are pretty slim. go back to those uh, dividends in just a moment from the eighth race in Melbourne. This time Langer going square again. There is a fieldsman out there. I'll manage to take two runs, which Chi Kui, the fielder. Yeah, they're good in the field, aren't they? Likes to be at first slip, I think, Richard Chiqui, but he's out on the fence. Brilliant with the bat today with 131. Up he gets, and pretty much straight over the bales from about 70 metres away. He'll never forget this match. Langer starting to work it into the gaps. He's looking for two. I don't think Tim Zura will get back with his leg problem. Tim Zura just straining a hamstring or just having a little bit of a problem with it in the game in Adelaide last week as we just go back to the Victorian dividends for race eight. Sports beat the winner. $5.80 and $2.10. 80 and $4.50 for the other place getters. Just one run again. A pleasant part of the day now. The sun's shining and the shadows of the light pylons just coming out onto the ground. Been a bit miserable at times during the day, but a pleasant early evening. Comfortably getting the single there to make it six runs from the 33rd over. 6 4, 118. We've had a pretty good Western Australian supporter. They came here with high hopes, all to be dashed by a very good New South Wales performance. New South Welshmen have had their disappointments during the summer. They got roundly beaten in Western Australia earlier in the summer, and I think there's a fair bit of that feeling, trying to erase that uh, defeat from their memory, 
and keep themselves in good form and uh, good confidence coming into the uh, business end of the Sheffield Shield season. They really have been a committed outfit today. Oh, look, it's a good fielding. Justin Langer doing his best, but he can't beat the, beat the fielding. Michael Bevan, the fielder on this occasion. Yes, any other day, I think Justin Langer would be pretty happy with, the way, <laughs> with his innings, but he just can't seem to be able to get them through. The New South Welshman picked the gaps. A bit lucky with a couple of drop catches. Western Australia definitely been outplayed all facets of the game today. A full toss goes back past the bowler on this occasion. Nearly took Timmy Zora with it. Another good piece of fielding. That's a wonderful example of this uh, fantastic attitude that the New South Welshmen have got. It's a real team effort out there. This is a magnificent hit from Justin Langer. It's not easy to get them cross batted down the ground, especially off a pace bowler. Nearly killed Tim Zur on the way through. But look at that. The cutoff man there for the short throw, then back. And then up the other end. Wonderful teamwork. I think that's the key word for the day. Bruce teamwork. It's been a very good team effort from the New South Welshmen. They've worked very hard at their cricket. Their out cricket has been very good. Well and truly on top of Western Australia all day. Their captain, Phil Emery, giving them a bit of encouragement. Shane Lee took a good catch. Michael Bevan batted very well earlier in the day. Very mature innings from him. Chi Kui, of course, we've seen plenty of him. This time Langer finds the gap. Only one run resulting. Shane Lee fielding on the boundary. So it has been a good performance. We noted just before Shane Lee take, took the catch just uh, in on the boundary. The fielding of Gavin Robertson just a while ago. The quick turn. He knew the cutoff fieldsman would be there. Just turned and threw it without having to look. And sure enough, there was someone there waiting for it. And that is a very good sign of a team that's well drilled. Three runs from that over from Ali. Six for 121. 21. One for 160 at the same stage. New South Wales went on to make 264. Langer 62. Zora 3. Gavin Robertson will continue from the Randwick end. Just adjusting the field for the left-hander who has shown a desire to sweep. So they've placed an extra fieldsman down just backward of square leg. They have one on the boundary in front of square leg. And the fellow deep at wide mid on. So the leg side pretty well protected. So Langer goes for the offside. They take the single. Yeah, let's hope he goes on and makes a hundred here. He's a terrific young player. He's uh, Highly competitive, 63 is made, two fours and a six from 98 deliveries, a strike rate of 64.3. Tim Zura batting number eight for WA. There's Langer's wagon wheel. There's that uh, the red line there, that's the sweep for six. I think you described that as a swat from uh, Tim Zura through mid-wicket. Back to Langer's wagon wheel. Just not a lot down the ground. Lots of nicks and nudges. Back cut for four. And drive. Down through mid on for four. Struggle to get the ball to the fence. Very difficult situation. All he can hope to do is just keep it ticking over and perhaps hope for a miracle, a bit of support from the other end. Western Australia really needed a good start following the, the big total set by New South Wales. And when Tom Moody went early and followed soon after by Jeff Marsh and uh, Damien Martin, really the innings was in great trouble at that stage. 
the letter followed quickly as well so it never really got off the ground it's only been Justin Langer who's been able to keep the scoreboard ticking over as I say all he can hope to do is just keep it ticking over aim for a few boundaries I hope that someone else can, uh, can do some heavy hitting at the other end there's no point just throwing it away just gonna try and give the, the team total some sort of respectability but all in all it's been New South Wales all day and a bit of confusion in the middle Langer wanted the run to Mizura wasn't sure five runs from the over six for 126 giving New South Wales this year they're well on top one for 164 at the same stage of their innings West Australia are going to find it very hard to dig themselves out of this Shane Lee coming into the attack he'll be bowling from the Paddington end so all in all the mercantile mutual cup final has been a one-sided affair Holdsworth, look at that. Seven overs for 15. Maxwell, six overs, one for 23. McNamara, six overs for 16. Ali bowled beautifully. Ten overs, one for 34. Took a magnificent catch as well to dismiss Tom Moody. Robertson, six overs for 33. That's a bit more than five and over. And Lee about to commence his spell. Let's see what he can do. In the air again, Justin Langer, and that's good night. Very comfortable catch to Neil Maxwell. He was involved in a run out earlier. A good bit of fielding. This time he wasn't put under quite so much pressure. And when you're hot, you're hot. Shane Lee walks in, rolls the arm over. Thank you very much. One for none. What a wonderful innings from uh, Justin Langer here. But he, uh, as soon as he swung at that, on, you could see the look on his face. What did I do that for? I haven't even had a look at this bowler. The first ball of his spell. Doesn't know whether he's going to bowl it quick or medium or what. And he'd be very disappointed. It would have been good for him to make 100. He's out for 65 and 101 deliveries. Western Australia, 7 for 126. Uh, domestic cricket. A score of 22 for Mark Atkinson. He's out there as the non-striker. Justin Langer was the man removed to allow him in. Yeah, just a wild swing at the first ball from a new bowler. It's too wide. He didn't try to hit it where it was supposed to go, and that was probably through the covers somewhere. He's just swung, tried to hit it for six. And even though he batted pretty well, he did his best. He'd be very disappointed in getting out in such a manner. Zura will just work away each ball on its merits and see what he can do mark atkinson is the one that uh, has just joined him they'll need an almighty partnership to pull this out of the fire i think there's an air of resignation about the the whole performance from the western australians now they know they've been outplayed all they can do is salvage a little bit of pride Now he's a good striker of the ball, Mark Atkinson. If he goes down the ground, very powerful hitter down the ground. I don't think he's a player who's uh, who should be looking at uh, dabbing little late cuts and things off the first ball he faces. Yeah, look at that for a team effort. A wicket from everyone who's bowled today. Superb performance. What we're seeing here with the New South Wales side is a tremendous credit to the New South Wales Cricket Association and the various clubs and association affiliated with it throughout the state. They've got a great program of identifying talent and bringing them through. The fact that there's five players in South Africa with the Australian team and yet they can still put a side on the field here. They've managed to outperform the visitors in every aspect of the game. That ends the first over, just one run from it uh, and a wicket from Shane Lee, seven for 127. Four. 
Western Australia. Seven for 127. Evan Robertson will continue his spell. This is his seventh over. Missouri just playing the little dab. He'll be looking to come back for two. Richard Chiqui's covered a fair bit of this ground today in one way or another. If not on foot. With the ball. Hit the Western Australian bowlers to all parts of the ground this morning. Even made uh, one delivery from Tom Moody disappear over the boundary fence. So the business end of the season really alive and well. This is the final of the Mercantile Mutual Cup, but the Sheffield Shield program is still to be finished. One more game each. New South Wales, no doubt, will win this, this competition. They're sitting atop the uh, points table in the Sheffield Shield competition. They will host the final. Who joins them in the final will be decided next weekend from the 17th of March. South Australia v Tasmania, Western Australia v Victoria, and New South Wales hosting Queensland here at the SCG. South Australia may well be second on the points table at the moment, but any one of the sides below them can get past them if they play well enough in their remaining games. Even Western Australia, who are sitting at the bottom of the shield table at the moment, still have a chance of playing in the final. So this series might be just about over for them, but the season is not finished. West Australia can still do it. They've got a game at home, which is where they perform so well. They can still push South Australia out of that second spot. Three runs from the over, seven for 130. Right now, and seven. Australia seven for 130. Shane Lee bowling his second over. Missouri facing, has a walk down the wicket and smacks it straight back past mid on. It's a very aggressive shot, and a good result. But uh, I'll need a few more boundaries, so to tell us whether they can do it or not, we've got Kerry O'Keefe and Bill Laurie. No, I doubt whether they can do it, but if I was Tim Zura, I'd be looking at the 170,000 bucks on the side screen at this stage. I think the match is gone, but the money's still up there for grabs. And he's hitting that way, but he just pulls across it a bit. It's a good, clean hit down the ground for four. Tim Zura with all his experience, he moves to 13. Shane Lee, the bowler, right arm over the wicket. This time he goes over mid-off. That one going all the way for four again. So Tim Zura saying, while there's life, there's hope. Good afternoon, Kerry O'Keefe. Good afternoon to you, Bill, yes. And Tim Zura is a very straight player. Gets a lot of runs late for WA in Perth. This is a quicker New South Wales wicket. He loves to hit through the line. Uh, that was just outside the off stump. He opened the face, he came at it, and he backed his swing. It looks impossible, but Tim Zura is the sort of bloke that can hit boundaries and raise hopes. We'll skip this into mid wicket region. Now he's the fieldsman, just a single. Well, the day started well for New South Wales. Phil Emery won the toss, it was a big toss to win with rain about here at the Sydney Cricket Ground and Cheekly batted superbly a magnificent knock 131 off just 146 balls face a strike rate of 90 Bevan 77 off 104 and Bayless at the end 36 with six boundaries off 24 and it was four for 264 after the 50 overs was bowled no ball called the West Australian bowling was disappointing apart from Joe Angel early on about a good spell five overs for about 16, he finished up with one for 40. Uh, Julian, 11 off his first over, come back well, none for 42, but all in all, New South Wales batting was in control and a 199 run partnership between Bevan and Cheekwee set up a big score. In reply, West Australia, they struggled from the start. One for 16, two for 39, three for 43. And as we see there, Lee putting it on line, it can Tamed Western Australia. The pitch has been a beauty, a good pitch from Peter Roy, no excuses at all. After 37.4 overs, 7 for 140, Justin Langer 65 of 101, and apart from that, dual in 19 off 20, it's been a disappointing batting performance. Maybe Zura can do some damage with Angel and Stewart to come. 
And the sun breaking through. A nice evening now. It's freezing cold, mind you. Even for uh, New South Welshman, Kerry O'Keefe's gone very quiet on the weather today. I'm just, I'm just savouring a victory, though. Um, I don't know. It has been disappointing in the batting, but I think more credit should be given to the bowling of the New South Welshman. They thwarted the uh, visitors with the fact that they bowled a length and an angle into them. WA have always profited on their home pitch when people have bowled wide to them and given them pace to work with. Holes, from Holsworth down, all the bowlers have slanted in and denied them those shots. That's a fair comment. Yeah, certainly playing very well. That's the over bowled, seven for 141. Backward point. And for club secretaries, just a reminder from the Australian Cricket Board, to check your mail, the strength in numbers, the survey taking place right over Australia with clubs, trying to find how many actual cricketers are playing in this country. Please get your letters in. So far, 80% of the clubs have replied around Australia. That's fantastic as they come back for two here. This is the cricket ground, so the hard-working sector is just one more job to do this summer. Strength in numbers, a survey by the Australian Cricket Board. Robertson is showing what you can do when you get an opportunity. Kevin Robertson has grabbed that opportunity this summer in two hands. They pick up another two. And facing, uh, I guess, Greg Matthews in the lineup as a permanent off spinner. And he's been given the second. He's been given the new ball in two second innings this year and got five wickets in both. Once again, spinners benefit from trust. New South Wales, when they pick a seven ele second eleven. They pick two fast bowlers and three specialist spinners. And people like Gavin Robertson and David Friedman are coming through, benefiting from that sort of trust. I guess it'd be fair to say it helps if the pitch turns as well. It has always turned here in Sydney. The last 30 years, turning track, and they have faith in their finger spinners as well, as well as the wrist spinners like Friedman. Zura trying to cut late. Good cricketer, Tim Zura. Playing with the side injury, I guess. He's not out 22. Not only 21 balls faced. Balls about high and good free hit of the ball. Yep. Cheeky. Seven for 147. Been runs off 60 balls to win, so that's not impossible. I guess Tim Zura would be a hero if he can score at that rate. He has plenty of experience and he's a good clean striker of the ball. Zura is on 23. He walks out and hits it down. There's a man there. It's Chiqui. He lets it bounce. Didn't really have a red hot go there. Richard Chiqui defended rather than attacked. And Zura coming at the bowler across the line. Chiqui dismissed it as a chance possibly misreading it but situation not desperate for New South Wales it's club down too long off a single they've bowled very well New South Wales they haven't given them much width at all they've made the hit in the arc between cover and mid wicket they've defended very well and Lee hasn't had much to do today but he's a promising cricketer as well handy all rounder Got a spring in his step. Looks a good athlete. Here comes to Missouri. Swing and a miss. Walking directly at the balls. At least he's not going to the leg side. No, and hindsight's got 20 20 vision, but he's a sort of play. This is a quicker pitch than has been produced lately here. He's trying to tug across the line because uh, it's mission impossible, you would think. But given the fact that Martin and Langer and, and Hogg and that have come here before and not got runs, Zura may have been advantaged up the, up the order. He's a sort of bloke that could have hurt New South Wales early with his driving, as Cheekwee and Bevan did. Let's cut that beautifully through cover. It should go all the way. The man's coming around quickly. Won't get it. 
Just a touch of complacency creeping into New South Wales here. Chiqui not desperate enough for a catch earlier in the over, and Holsworth conceded a boundary there. It was well struck by Zura, but this is a slow outfield. He, he gave a perfunctory chase here, did Wayne Holsworth. Could have reined that in, and only in the end did he uh, perhaps put on the accelerator. This time he gets a square down to Elliot Farnweg. Zura doing well here for Western Australia. Still 10 overs to be bowled after this one. Forty-nine over match. In fact, nine overs to be bowled after this one. Induction of one over due to rain. Target two hundred and sixty-two. Oh, I don't suppose it's impossible, Kerry. Well, the number ten got eighty-four not out here in the last shield game they played. But the number eleven is a dead set number eleven. It's the over bowled. Seven for one five four. Five four at the Sydney Cricket Ground. The final of the Mercantile Mutual Cup for ninety-three ninety-four. Tim Zura standing between New South Wales and Victory. They asked the question there outside the line. Umpires have had a pretty easy day here today. Two top umpires. Steve Randell and Daryl Hare officiating in the final. And that's a shout. Not a lot of spin there for Robertson. Ball coming on. Perhaps the right decision. Kevin, good square leg. Robertson is tidy, one for 42. He's ninth over. He's certainly not a Jim Waker, but he's a very handy cricketer. Good look at the field. There's two and three in the deep on the onside, so he may go over cover if he's given some room. Oh, he goes for it, but he gets it through slip. <laughs> Gavin Robertson can't believe how that's not gone into the off stump. It's almost hit it behind the leg stump. Giving himself a lot of room and he's just managed to avoid off stump. Time he's gone over cover and it's gone a long, long way. Beautifully placed shot. It's the place he's going to go with three men on the onside. Tim Zura fighting very hard here for Western Australia. The drivers have all got runs here today at the SCG. Tim Zura's, uh, uh, along with Moody, perhaps the best driver in this Western Australian side. And further evidence, he may have been up the order. Say goodbye now to Adelaide viewers. They go to news. It's goodbye from the Sydney Cricket Ground. Seven for one, six, three. It's a good stroke. There's a man there at deep point. Ten runs off the over. That's what's needed. Seven for one, six, four to 41. Zura 37, only 32, fighting hard, the experienced wicket keeper. Good cricketer, Tim Zura. Probably unlucky. Never held the keeping position for longer. A very handy batsman. And McNamara coming back into the attack. This guy is one of the keys for New South Wales in all types of cricket. He's a wicket taker. He's a very handy, well-ordered batsman. He's always attacking. He's bowling to the experienced Tim Zura. Brad. Brad McNamara has taken a wicket in every appearance here, Mercantile Mutual Cup this season. Very good length bowler in Sydney. In the final last year against Victoria, he got Dean Jones out with a little outswinger. That turned the match. And he's been pivotal in a couple of the victories again this season for New South Wales. So it doesn't give them much uh, width at all, full toss. And Tim Zura, 
He's been around a long time now, Tim Zura. He's only 32 years of age. He's playing his 35th match. Average of 24, batting down the list and a good strike rate of 70. His highest score, strangely enough, only 57 against New South Wales at the Wacker. He could uh, beat that today. He's 38 not out at the moment. That's well bowled. He's, he finds a yard of pace. McNamara. Atkinson uh, can't get the cue on the ball at all. It's been one of the most significant things here today that the Western Australians who are raised on quick pitches have been very late on their strokes in trying to drive the New South Welshman. Lots of deliveries have gone under the bat, beaten by pace. Surprising. It's well bowled. Go back to that final last year, Kerry. You picked up Dean Jones and Darren Lehman, I think, in the same over. But McMurray, he was swinging the ball in last year's final here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Well, the rain's probably taken a shine off this ball pretty early on, but he doesn't give the batsman any width at all. He has a good change of pace. Let of LBW with a slower delivery today. That's it high in the air. The man's going back cheekily. It's going all the way. It's six. That's a good hit. The man who's been struggling, Atkinson, finds a long on boundary. Right over the top. And that's a big blow from Mark Atkinson. A few street corner tips that this bloke can hit big, and this is a big one. He's got a good piece of it. He hit it very low. The fellow in the track bottoms dropped it, but Cheekwee has another chance. Short. Doesn't it, hasn't it a good die cleaner? Richard Cheekwee, he's not prepared to get onto the grass. It's the second time he's balked there. I don't think they're too worried at seven for 172 in the 42nd. Still plenty of action. Zura moving to 38. Atkinson moving to 10 with that big blow down the ground for six. That's well struck down to long off, straight down his throat. Yes. Neil Maxwell, I didn't see him drop a regulation catch, Neil Maxwell. That was well caught. It was dying in the end. He came forward, got it with both hands. Robson picks up his second wicket. And that's the end of Mark Atkinson. Just a little bit of curve from Robertson out. The slice drive. A lot of slicing gone on when the Western Australians have gone over the top. And Neil Maxwell, the safest pair of hands in this state. Good ground to his left. No mistake. Only the final nails to be put in this coffin. Atkinson out for 10. WA8 for 172. Of years of age, playing his 12th. Match for West Australia and a limited over series for his state. Career strike rate of 71.4, an average of only five. He did make a good 80 here against New South Wales. He joins Tim Zura. Zura on 38. It's eight for 172. And Robertson once again doing a good job. Mark Atkinson just getting a little bit too far under that. A dipping catch that, as we've seen throughout the summer, who has gone over cover. Now he cleans up. Three for one. And happily back for second. Zura zigzagging down the pitch. Yeah, so Maxwell has been very safe throughout this season and had no difficulty in this offering from Atkinson. It's been a fine exhibition of out cricket by the New South Welshman in stark contrast to the visitors. Yes, that's a fair comment. They have fielded brilliantly in New South Wales. They've caught well. They've um, one run out. The ground fielding has been very sound. And West Australia struggled from the first ball today. Missfield from the first delivery of the match, and they missed about four or five run outs. Couldn't hit the timber. But a very confident and professional New South Wales side here going to win their third Mercantile Mutual Cup on the trot. That's fantastic. Joe Angel, right arm bowl, left handed batsman, and he can hit a ball a mile. Robson, 9.4 overs, 2 for 55. Just 
Keeps curving into these pads, does Gavin Robertson, and what a good tactic it's been. They want some room on off stump, and he won't give it to them. Robertson completes his 10 overs, 2 for 56, a fine spell. It's 8 for 176, 0 41. Six overs to be bowled. It's a 49 over match for Western Australia. Target is 262. Brad McNamara still taking his time with his field facings, being the final egg in, so only a single down to that position. A tough assignment for Big Joe here. He's got a graying ball, a ball that's going to just slap it in at him just short of a good length. And what's more, he's going to bowl it very straight, Brad McNamara. Very little room to manoeuvre. Full pitch. Always tidy, McNamara, even in the later overs. His first six overs just cost 16 runs for one wicket. 7.2 overs, 1 for 24. Very tidy. Slow ball. Not very well today, Joe Angel. He's had a very good year. 20-odd wickets in the Sheffield Shield competition with at least one game to go. And also bowled very well in the Mercantile Mutual Cup for Western Australia. There's the charge, and he's cramped up. That's excellent bowling. Saw the batsman coming, angled in towards the pads. And Brad McMurray has a very pure bowling action, very still hit at release, keeps his eyes right on the batsman. Any early movement from them, he picks up. And he saw Big Joe come, and he knew exactly where to bowl it. Straight to mid on, they're through for single, the throw at the stumps, misses, safely home. It's a very strong breeze pushing across the ground again, it's quite cool. The weather's held, it's been a reasonably fine day, considering the poor start this morning. Farrod hit, he'd been out. Like most number 10s and 11s, they don't like to ground the bat. What can Zura do? He's on 41, he needs a strike. This is the last ball McNamara's over. 7.5 overs, 1 for 25. It's good to the square leg. So good home for a single well backed up by Maxwell. That's 8 for 178. This one's broken, he says. Up to 44 overs, it's 8 for 178. Zura on 42. Joe Angel's on 2. This is the situation for Western Australia. And even uh, have a look at the others, just pick out the green handled one. Thirty balls remaining, and you four runs required for victory and two wickets in hand. Well, it'll have to be bionic. Better get home here. But he's going to go down playing some strokes. Interesting his method against Holsworth, who's going to try and veer in at him. Will he help him on his way over mid wicket, or will he give himself room to go over the offside? Emery getting the field right. They've planned it well, the New South Welshman. Probably go to the onside with the extra pace, and he does angle in towards uh, weak stump and may drop short. It's quite cold, Wayne Holsworth. He's been in the field while the early spell, nice and tidy. Eight overs, one for 15. And 
it's clubbed over to the onside for a single. Just a reminder that the March edition of Inside Edge is on sale now at all news agents, Kmart, Coles Supermarkets. Land of Hope was his been wife to Soweto's Field of Dreams. Kepler's Clay and what a series he's having. Hansi Cronier playing in Bradman like fashion with, with the bat and of course Michael Whitney that wonderful personality from New South Wales is retired. That's all in Inside Edge the Marks edition. It's well hit down the ground by Big Joe Angel. They're coming back for two and it's good running. This is the Wayne and Jonty Rhodes the Warren and Jonty Rhodes story. Two high profile cricketers, one a batsman, one a leg spinner, and of course Damien Martin, growing pains from the West. Out now, Marsh, edition of Inside Edge. Just five dollars, recommended retail price. Big Joe Angel. Chips it nicely to mid off for single. Big difference at 260-odd carry against 230 or 240, isn't it? Still give themselves a chance if they were only chasing about 230. Well, they, they did it very well, New South Wales. They needed Bayless to add the finishing touches, and he did. Uh, hasn't played Sheffield Shield cricket this summer. Been in terrific form in club cricket. But his 36 in no time late gave them that extra 30 runs. And in the end, it really put them out of sight. Zero. Well, that's well field. That's Bayless. That's the man in question. 31 years of age. A brilliant fieldsman at mid wicket. Struggled to hold a permanent position in the New South Wales 11. Been a great servant for New South Wales though over many years. Trevor Bayless. Country lad. In a very good field. Once again, a player vindicating the faith of the selectors. Uh, he's been a, a tremendous performer at the SCG. That's where he scored a, a, the bulk of his runs. Brilliant slow wicket player. And they brought him back for this final. Zero on 44, Angel on five. Tim Zero showing again he's a very handy cricketer. Very correct batsman in fact. He can play straight, can play square of the wicket. Probably batting too low, as Keith has pointed out today. May have been worth a chance in his arm early on. His experience and a good strike of the ball, but high grip does drive well. He's hit that, and Phil Alley's going back, back, and he won't get it. Knocks it back, they run three. Nine off the over. Eight for 187. It's eight for 187. After 45 overs, four more overs to be bowled. It was a toss vital to Western Australia, really. They needed to bat first. No form when the wicket slows, and they had to chase 260. He's nicked that, and it gets through. That'll bring up the 50 for Tim Zura. Inside edge should go nearly all the way. And does it? They're kicking it. They're fighting for it under the side screen. Wait for the call there. I think they call that four. And Tim Zura moves to 50, and that's well played. Great hand by the little wicket keeper. Talking about servants, um, what a great servant of Western Australian cricket he's been. He's won them a number of outrights uh, during the Sheffield Shield competition, and here he is, 50 not out in a final. Admittedly, it looks a lost cause, but very much undaunted by situations. Great temperament. 12 ball by McNamara gets through. They pick up another single. A magnificent strike right there. His first 50 of the season. And Dole Mutual Cup. Played very well against Victoria. At 40 odd, he's in very good touch here this afternoon. Now Angel whips that to square leg, just a single. It's Tim Zura, 32 years of age, and 
and showing what experience can do in a tough situation. It's at five fours. Only over cover. Nick to final leg for the 50 and one down to Wong on. Falls over. <laughs> Gets into the gap. It's the single. The fancy feet will not phase McNamara because of he's looking all the time at what they're doing. He knows that all that sort of foot movement means nothing and spearing it at the base of Midland leg. Pride here, Tim Zur for his team. Throw in the sponge. <laughs> Chance for a run out if he hits. It's close. Steve Randall says not out. So it's eight for one nine six. you think the days of buying a family meal for around $15 are over, think again. Because right now at Pizza Hut, you can get any two large pizzas for an incredible $15.90. That's two large pizzas for just $15.90. Choose any two larges. Super Supreme, Supreme, Meat Lovers, Bacon Lovers, Hawaiian, or any two of your favourite pizzas. And it's a situation with three overs remaining. Tim Zura, 54. Wayne Halsworth from the Randwick end. Tire score for the season. Balls up to 48, not out against Victoria, off 60 balls faced. It's it down to finally just a single. The last ball of the previous over was a close uh, run out there. It's uh, worked away by. Tim Zura and Big Joe Angel, to his credit, was out the box pretty quickly, but he looked gone there. He made ground with those big strides and the big reach. They started well for New South Wales when Phil Emery won the toss. And his batsman didn't let him down. It was a wonderful performance by Chiqui and Bevan. They added 199 for the second wicket. That's a record for New South Wales. And after 50 overs, they were four for 264. Trevor Bayless, 36 off 24 with six boundaries, lifted the score in the final four overs. So after 301 balls were bowled, it was four for 264. safe and have a cover they're through for another single west australian bowlers they were steady rather than brilliant though i thought they went down in the field tom moody dropped a fairly simple catch at long on there was one or two run outs that went begging early on angel 10 overs one for 40 probably the best damien martin in the end picked up two for 31 off four no no balls and no wide so there's some discipline there Chip nicely over him. square leg, at least two. In reply, West Australia have reached 200 for eight. They started badly. Moody was out for 12, Marsh for 11, 65 by Justin Langer. Damon Martin beautifully caught in the gully for a duck. Valletta one, Hogg run out for five, Julian 19 off 20, Zura 57 off 45, Atkinson 10 off 18, and Angel. Eight not out of 14, his highest score so far this summer. Mercantile Mitchell Cup. And I guess the only prize that hasn't gone here today is the $170,000 for the players and the $17,000 for our home viewers and hit the sign competition.
and the consolation winners, assuming that nobody hits the sign in the dying minutes, will receive a cap and a shirt in the Mercantile Mutual colours of the home teams. So congratulations to those winners in the Mercantile Mutual consumer competition. That's out to Long On. It's safe. So that's the last ball. It's eight for 204. Mercantile Mutual Cup. At the SCG, the Blues scored a massive 264, Cheekwe 131 and Michael Bevan 77. Western Australia could only manage 218 after their target was reduced to 262 because of rain. Grey skies threatened a washout, but a fluke touch from Mark Atkinson rained on Martin Hayward. Bit of fielding and that's out. The freakish dismissal seemed set for a repeat with both Cheekwe and Bevan hell bent on suffering a similar fate. Someone ran over a black cap. But Moody found nothing superstitious in Chiqui's batting. That's going all the way. Dropped by the cameraman. There. The knock was by no means chanceless. Valletta clutched at thin air and Moody dropped the sitter. But the opener smashed his hundred off just 110 deliveries. He punches the air and rightly so. Bevan played the minor partner but gave glimpses of style before being bedeviled by a full toss from Joe Angel while Chiqui finally fell to part-timer Damian Martin. Set 265, WA's chase faltered early, openers Moody and Marsh falling before the rain. The wet meant a 49-over match and a reduced target of 262, but only resulted in a duck for Martin. He's caught, Maxwell. No, it was McNamara. McNamara then trapped the letter with the ball, and after a couple of close shaves, Maxwell had Bradley Hogg run out. Neil Maxwell is quick, is going to be on here, and he's gone. Langer played a lone hand, smashing this six on his way to 65, but when he holed out, WA's hopes went with him. Zura's half-century saved some face for the visitors, but the Blues were crowned one-day domestic champs for the third successive season. Andrew McKinlay, National 9 News. G today. Blues opener Richard Cheekwe, supported by Michael Bevan, set up a huge score, which was always beyond the West Australians. The Blues suffered an early setback when Haywood was run out after Atkinson deflected the ball onto the stumps. A bit of fielding and that's out. But the dismissal was the signal for Richard Cheekwe and Michael Bevan to launch an attack the WA bowlers will long remember. That is another magnificent blow into the outfield. On a flat pitch, Cheekwe murdered the out of form Julian, taking 11 off his first over and then took to Moody, hitting the medium pacer for a massive six. Going all the way, dropped by the cameraman there. With good support from Bevan, Chiqui smashed his way to one of the best one day hundreds of the season. That's a tremendous knock, he punches the air and rightly so. The pair adding 199 before Bevan was out for 77. That's one of the few poor shots that's been played so far in the innings. But Chiqui going on to make 131. And then with some big hitting from Bayless off the final overs, the Blues finished with a formidable four for 264. Coming around, they're getting around towards the side screen. Four it is. Not far, that was about a metre from 170,000. Big ones. Needing to score a better than five and over, WA were always on the back foot. Moody out for 12 and followed shortly after by Marsh, who was trapped in front by a sand shoe crusher from Holdsworth. A shower of rain reduced the target slightly, but WA fell further behind the run rate when Martin was out to a brilliant catch by McNamara. Langer played a responsible innings, making 65, and Zura went down fighting for WA, but the Blues were always in the driving seat, coasting to their third straight win in the one-day competition.